in the United States for our victims. And there is zero for local housing. So she's part of that. Um, you know, it, it's easy for us to sit and judge. Say, well, they just, you know. Well, I had, I just was very fortunate in my life. Plus, I'm a fighter. My mom told me I was born this way. And, um, but there are women that need help. We need to figure out how, how to do this. And for them to empower themselves, they're now empowered through Judge Herbert's program. They're proud of themselves. They're no longer uh, living their lives in shame. And with this whole way of you know, feeling bad about themselves and no one's gonna like me, society, I'm, I'm doing all bad. Well, maybe, maybe things just happened in their lives. That's why we need more social workers and we need to pay them better. You can clap on that. <laughs> the health problems. Um, in Toledo, we have a protocol sheet that um, the community <coughs> response group put together and the health department realized that this is a real serious problem in spreading diseases, STD, a lot of health issues are happening with this type of lifestyle. So they've been able to rescue girls um, in a lot of different departments in Toledo working on our, um, in our group, we've been able to rescue quite a few people. But <clears throat> the health problems I think are significant enough for nurses, school nurses, physicians, hospitals, any of the health healthcare fields should look at these statistics. And realize if you if you address and correct this problem and combat it, look what you're doing. You're really helping get rid of all these bad statistics, suffering more hypertension. 24.7% versus 10. The heart problems, 19.5% versus 6.8. We women already have a lot of health heart problems. We know that. Cancer, 11.8% versus 5.7. HIV, 2.7 versus zero. STIs, 37.2 versus 13.1. And really, a lot of the uh, law enforcement, judges, social workers are talking about these victims. They do have the same significant issues that someone that's caught in, in battle. Post-traumatic stress syndrome, they experience that. 17.3% versus 8.7. More depression, more bipolar disorder, more schizophrenia. We talked about the study commission. Um, Attorney General DeWine continued the work, chaired by Melinda Seitz. And we have subcommittee, the legal legislative subcommittee is one that I work on, and I'm working on legislation, so that fit very well. Plus, I, get, I have uh, everyone paying attention. We're going to do a lot more. Training and Law Enforcement Subcommittee, Sheriff Gene Kelly. Um, State Highway Patrolmen have all been trained. They have posters on um, the turnpike, all of our rest stops, and we've been able to rescue quite a few. In fact, the month that they received their first training, uh, there was a trooper who stopped a trucker. He noticed a girl in the back cab. He separated her because she kind of looked scared or young. And found out that he that trucker was getting ready to sell her um, trafficking market, uh, and she was um, developmentally delayed. He had kidnapped her, <coughs> got her somehow into that camp. So we rescued her. Um, the Prevention, Outreach, and Education Subcommittee. <coughs> that's where we're working with Ohio Department of Education, Health Department. Everyone's becoming more um, familiar with what this. Trafficking looks like what it is and what we can do. Victim assistance and safe location. That's the tough one. Michelle Hanna, she works with um, Salvation Army. They're doing a great job, but all of these reports and recommendations are online and you can find out you know, what it is we need to do in Ohio. The Demand Reduction Subcommittee, Teresa Flores, the survivor. And um, I'm going to be calling her tomorrow. She has a SOAP project. She has a SOAP project, and I forgot what the acronym stands for. But um, she buys bars of soap, puts the 8100 hotline number on there, and asks if they want, you know, if you're a victim, 
and you want rescue. And she goes to all the hotels. She just went to the Arnold Classic, which they bring in 180,000 people every year to Columbus. And um, she goes to the hotels and asks if they can put the soap in there. If they say no, then each, all the hotels she, all the hotels will have a sheet of the missing persons in Ohio that are under 18. And so I have to call her tomorrow and see how that works. But the hotel industry is really beginning to cooperate. The mayor of Columbus, law enforcement, and they did that in um, the Super Bowl. They were able to rescue two girls. One of them was from Cleveland. This, this is working, and I guess our message would be to the victims, we're going to help you. We may not have the perfect answer right now, we're building it, but we want to rescue you. We're not going to hate you. We're not going to make you feel like you know, you're a piece of dirt. You're not valued in society. So our message to them is to come forward. And then also the demand reduction subcommittee, um, my intention is to increase the penalty for customers. And in Chicago, they raised the impoundment fee $200, so it's now $400 to get your car out of impoundment if you're a John or customer. And $200 of, $200 of that $400 will go into a statewide fund to help victim services. So we're looking at that model. And then. <coughs> Of course, the John has to go home and explain why he doesn't have the car. Um, the research and analysis subcommittee, that's Dr. Celia Williamson. Um, she's the one that came up with a formula to quantify the number of victims and at-risk victims in the state of Ohio. And, and with that, I, I have a friend here that was part of that, um, Brenda Griffith from Defiance. She's done a lot to help us with the Trafficking Commission, um, she was involved with the bill introduction with my good friend, Representative Kathleen Chandler. She had a bill in the House, I had a bill in the Senate, and she worked for Kathleen Chandler. So you're very familiar with what we need to do. I want to thank you for your work. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. I want to thank her for doing that, and she's getting involved in this um, running a campaign. And you need smart people down there. We're going to take care of business, not just play politics. Okay, that's my good thing. Um, so the new tool, Senate Bill 235, which Brenda's familiar with, I could only get one thing done at a time. Now Kathleen Chandler had everything but in the kitchen sink in her bill, which I would have loved to get that bill done. But I could only get this one piece done. I was working in the Senate. I'm in the minority. I've always worked in the minority, but it doesn't matter. I don't act like I am. And we were able to have a standalone felony offense. The good news is um, there's interest in raising that level of offense to meet the federal level. So the minimum um, number of years will be 10. So we'll have the same penalty level as the federal government. So there's the the Safe Harbor Act for Exploited Children, this bill will exempt a victim of trafficking from Ohio solicitation statute. This sounds really easy. It's not. Because many of them run away. We don't have an appropriate response. I just mentioned to you that Judge Zemelman is holding four victims right now, and she's not charging them, but there's no place for her put them. And she's working with Children's Services and they're kind of slow on the dime because we don't have an appropriate response. We don't have our therapeutic foster homes trained yet. And you can start training them. They can already do that without any legislation. And Children's Services can start training. They don't need me to write a law to do that. Um, a victim of trafficking who is a minor will be provided with appropriate services, including physical and mental health care. And then a poster will be created. Um, there are six states, I believe, more states are passing quickly now. Um, this idea of a poster, it will provide information regarding the National Human Trafficking Resource Center hotline. It will help people understand what this is. There's a little definition. 
The poster will be provided to and will be required to be posted in certain establishments such as highway truck stops, hotels, adult entertainment establishments, hospitals, massage parlors, establishments with uh, liquor licenses, agricultural labor camps and fairs, and I think there may be some beauty shops. And so what can you do? You can support this legislation. Um, whoever your legislator is, tell them you need to get this passed. The key to prosecution is to have a victim helping and helping us prosecute the pimps and the traffickers. If we don't have the victim's cooperation, we can't end this. We can't combat it, we can't put the real criminals in jail. So first of all, we need to rescue them because they're victims. Secondly, get them help. Third, they're going to help us break this criminal enterprise. It's the only way. And also with um, increasing penalties for customers on the demand end. This is a market-based criminal enterprise. They're, these are very smart businessmen. So it's a market-based system. Um, encourage your municipality to create and enforce the John School. And basically, it's a kind of a diversion program, but they're educated. And of course, there are other, going to be other layers of addressing the uh, demand and, and report instances of suspected human trafficking. And this is the 888 hotline number. And then, of course, the resource center. Um, I just want to share with you, I keep track, if you want to just keep track on Google, Human Trafficking Plus Ohio, you're going to be kept up to date with what goes on. I was <clears throat> reading an article that um, an FBI official said that they are ready to not only just go ahead and, and arrest people and really attack this problem, he said, from this time forward, we're going to go to their homes, customers. We're going to sit down with them at their house in front of their wives and children, and they can explain to us in front of their families why they are doing what they're doing. Uh. That's one way. Talk about you know reversing all this. Um, there's also um, a case, Calvin Winbush of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, was charged with transporting an underage girl across state lines, and he was as bold enough to get somebody to place on his Facebook page a way to help him raise bail money. So that was another interesting article. How bold they are. And then, um, um, there was this weekend, a father was arrested who had adopted a number of children, some from Texas, who was getting ready to adopt another girl that he was placing online. A ten year old boy was getting, nine year old boy was getting ready to be um, prosecuted this weekend, and it was, it was a stink. So he was adopting children, foster children, and selling his children. So think about, you know, gosh, if you adopt them, you're really safe. But then after that, we, you know, we wash our hands in an illegal area. Um, so you know, there are just different cases of how we're finding the different traffic. And every time we think we know how it operates, we find another case that looks different, and they morph into something else. So I guess the way to attack this is to help our children have good self-esteem, be supported in our community, have good, safe communities, make education matter in their lives, make sure it's good just because it isn't a Catholic school, a private school. You know, I went to go private and I taught in all of those. I still strongly believe in public education. 
for all. And it's very important to support that, not just, you know, have it shift one way or another because one is bad. I mean, this just feeds into the vulnerability of our children growing up into a society that thinks they're not good enough. So appealing to your core humanity here. And um, every child that's born in day one, boy, they have the best promise in America. I don't know what happens on day two. And I want it to be good. So I really appreciate um, all your time and effort and helping me with this stuff. Thank you. decided to go big time. So it could have been Detroit, it could have been Columbus, it could have been the Cleveland group. But it was the Toledo group that jumped on that. And then, you know, in the areas, I, I know what alleys, you know, a lot of the um, victims, and the victims that were helping, and they were adult victims. They were in adult prostitution, they reformed themselves, now they're helping the FBI because they see that they can. Help them understand. Um, I was part of a group that went through all the alleys and the streets where the pimps they knew who were being prosecuted and now they're serving jail time, lifetime sentences, where they recruited them. And they recruited them in the, in the poorest um, neighborhoods, the struggling schools that are both failing. It was the teacher's fault. Remember, I'm a teacher. <laughs> I'm, they're not going to pin this one on me. And they shouldn't pin it on any teacher. Whether you're teaching public school, private school, it doesn't matter. All teachers need the type of support from a community. And it shouldn't matter what socioeconomic neighborhood your children come in. You need the support that you need for every child that comes in the door. And this, this way of being prejudiced just really bothers me. And I want those private school teachers to get paid as much as I did in public school. Because my first job was in a private school, and I couldn't make ends meet, and I couldn't eat. And I was single mom. So, you know, I know what struggles they have. They don't have decent health care benefits and they have no retirement. So the last 10 years, they go to a public school to get the purse, I mean the skirt. So it, it's, we really need to evaluate ourselves as a society. Can women vote more than men? Why are there more women in the state house? There were only two women there, two women in the Senate my very first day for the whole year. CJ Press from Cleveland and myself. She was the black woman, I was the white woman. Guess what, I had the black story, she had the white story. 
but we played our roles. You know, and we, we told the men every time they wanted us to serve on the committee, no, you put a skirt on and act like you're home. We're not going to be on all these committees just because you need gender balance and there are only two of us here. And so, you know, think about it. We need to inspire you to do more because you are the leader. Women vote more than men, especially in a primary. Recruit women. And then make the women, because not all of us are equal, we need to be able to take the politics and put it aside and do what's right for our children, for our families. I think that's where we need to really take a look at this and be careful about the political rhetoric. Be careful about that. Yeah. I don't know if I answered your question, but well, that's what happened. The, the reason that I asked the question was, and, and the state of Ohio is working on it, so is Vegas in those places doing anything? Or yep, they have the same same legislation, standalone felony. Um, I don't know if they have the Safe Harbor Act. I'm going to be on the front end, not on the tail end. There are five states that have passed the Safe Harbor Act for women and children. I'm going to be the sixth, not the 45th. <laughs> we can have a better response. We can. We just do it. Ohio's that way. We were the first state to become state in the Northwest Territory. That's not true. We have more military <coughs> serving in Ohio than, you know, any other state, because all the people who came here in Ohio were all from the Revolutionary War, and they couldn't pay them money, so they paid them late. But it's part of our DNA to really put the appropriate response and to open our arms and to fix this. Because you're not just, if, if you're helping the victim and you're giving it Curbing this crime, you're doing all those other things you want to do with your tax dollars that we can't do, that we can't ever seem to solve. But if we solve this one, we're solving a lot of the other things we're always trying to address. Child abuse. We're ninth in the nation, we're 50th in the nation of funding children's services. This year, we get our money from the federal government, not from the state. So we have to. You know, say politicians, it's okay to put our money here. It's okay to put those resources where they belong early. I'm an early childhood educator. That's what I do. And we never do really well with our preschool and getting ready for first grade. And we know if we teach our children how to read by third grade, the prison systems will build that generation of prisoners. Prisoners. Right? It's a simple fact. Every community embraces every child to get them to read by third grade. You have saved billions of dollars. And all they need is someone to listen to them read. And we need teachers. We need to have someone listen to them read. Practice reading. And if they read by third grade, the prison system, the industry will not build that generation's prison. That's pretty good plan. That's a good plan. University women who are educated. <laughs> I do have some skills. I have to have some skills because <clears throat> this is a tough job to have. And I work for the best. Real cases, the cases that we're looking at, if you look at them, many of them are serving lifetimes. 
that's okay. Well, unless, unless you want to put an electric chair, I'd be okay with that. You know. Or I hope you're not taking <laughs> Here you are. You know what? You know, I, you're a public official. I'm looking at this because it has to end. You have to, you have to fix this thing. The demand, exactly. There's a low risk factor. Because there's a low risk. There's a low risk. There's a low risk. That's why we passed the standalone felony number and increased the penalty. There's a low risk factor. 